So the next thing we're going to look at is how to modularize code with packages. So we're just going to go through a little bit of introductory things and then the main thing I want to get to today before lunch are data structures. That's what I'm shooting for and pushing for and I'm going to teach you about different ways we store data and different structures we use to do that. But I just want to show you a little bit about modularizing your code. So here I have a folder main, right? And inside there I've got a file main. These can be called anything. They don't have to be called that, but that's just helpful for me for this, this, this little example. And in here I have package main and func main. So this is the entry point for my program. And uh, in here I'm calling string util reverse. <clears throat> well, I have a folder string util. And notice the import path for that, that, that code. Fumped comes from the standard library. I could just put fumped. And since the computer, since Go, knows that fumped is a standard library, it goes and it can get that, right? But when I want to bring in other packages, namespacing in Go is like, you know, everything under your Go workspace folder, right? So you got your source bin package folders under your Go workspace folder. And that looks like this. So I have my documents and then I have my Go workspace and I have source, bin, and package. Source is where all my source code is. And this is package management. This is namespacing. It's like keeping everybody's code separate, right? So under GitHub, I have code from all these different people, including code that I've written, right? And so I go in here and I go into Go, GoLang training and I go into packages and then there's string, string util. And so when I tell, you know, when I tell Go to go get some of my code somewhere else to use it, I say go to GitHub, goes to 11, GoLang training, 02 package, string util. And it goes there and it grabs this code. This code could have been anywhere in my workspace and I just say, you know, go get it, wherever it is in my workspace. And I put in that path to it in my workspace. My workspace is, you know, go workspace source and then anything under my source, right, is where I could like go and tell it, get this code, this source code so I could use it in this, in this, in this, uh, in this program. So here's package main, it went, and it went right here with this import and got that code. And now I'm using dot .reverse. That's a function. Okay, so I'm just going to look in here and see what we have. There's var my name Todd on that file. And here's reverse. And notice this is just package string util, package string util, right? That's kind of cool. And, uh, and then here is package string util. And here is a function reverse. It's got a capitalized R. In Go, we like keeping syntax clean, lean, concise, brief, evocative, right? And so we, in Go, you don't, you don't have to specifically specify, hey, this is, uh, this is public, this is private. Like in Java, you'll, you'll say with your code, this is private. Nobody else can use this. Nobody else can see it. Don't even look at it. Don't, don't, we're not even talking about it. We're just going to move on, right? That's private. And so, or you can say public. Other people can use this code. You can come and get it. That's Java. You have to explicitly declare public or private. Here, if it's capitalized, if my func identifier, the name of the function, the identifier, if it's capitalized, that can be visible outside the package. Or that can be seen visible or ex that's exported outside the package. I'm saying visible, not visible. Exported, not exported. I am not saying public, private. That comes with baggage from other languages, so they don't use those words in Go. They say visible, not visible, uh, exported, not exported. So when you have a capitalized func name or you have a capitalized variable name or a capitalized identifier, that is visible outside the package or that's exportable outside the package. If it's lowercase, I can't get to that outside the package. All right, so anyhow, this is how, whoa, this is how you, uh, import code from somewhere in your source code, right, within your work, work, workspace, and then you can use that. So it picks up the last part of the name. So notice string util there, string util here. From package string util, uh, give me reverse, okay, give me reverse. And, uh, and so it's going to take this text and it's going to reverse it. And then also from package string util, give me the variable my name. So if I go in here and I run this, I 
hello, go. It reversed that text, and then it also printed my name. The name came from right here, my name, my name, calling that function, calling that, or calling that variable, calling that variable. And the function came from right here, reverse, reverse, right? Calling that. Here I have reverse two. Ah, uh, this is calling return reverse two from here, which is not exported, right? That's all this one does. So you could have uh, exported function that calls uh, not visible, not exported function, and it will export it. If I tried to call reverse two directly, it doesn't even see it, right? Reverse two, reverse two takes a string, it returns a string. And it's going to be like, I don't know what, can't find reverse to, because that's not visible, not exported from the package. Okay, so that's a modularizing code in Go. And let me just change this one back. And then, you know, I always like to experiment to see what, how, are, how do things work, and, and what do I have to do, and what, what is optional. And so here's main. This could be anywhere. So I'm just going to copy this folder. And, you know, just out of curiosity, uh, I will take it and I will put it, so this is all just like, you know, experimental. I'm just going to put it right here under Golang Training. I didn't like that. Let me copy it from here. Command C, and then I'm going to put it here, Command V. And so now it's right there. Okay, so it's no longer in this area. Right there, it's now down here, which means it's no longer in zero package two. It's just straightly, straight under Golang Training. I'm going to change the name on this one so we're not grabbing it from there. That's not what I want to do. And refactor that for now. And so now, let's see if this still runs. And it should, right? It's just finding another place where that code's located. So I just tell it where's that code located. So I'm going to name this back. Actually, I'll leave that like that. I'm going to get rid of this. Delete. And uh, now uh, this is a once again in 0 2. I can't see. I know there's a way to do this. Go lang training. 0 2 underscore package string until X. There we go. All right? So now. The, the, the folder is that, but the package is string util. Okay, so I'm getting string util because that's the package name. Where do I find the package here? Is that still going to run? So I'm testing, does my folder name need to be named the same as my package name? What do you think? How many people think it will run? How many people think it won't run? How many people are like, I don't know, man, it's just a crapshoot. Let's see how it's built. That's how I feel, right? Cool. So your folder name does not need to be named the same as your package name. Nice. Could I have different packages in the same folder? New go file. And, you know, this will just be quicker. I'm just going to copy this one. And we'll call it name2 is the name of the file. And we're going to call it package Winnie the Winnie Pooh. And we're going to do uh, bear name, who. And now we're just going to print that. Don't. And already we're getting WebStorm not liking something. And so we're going to do bear name, but code completion got it. And string util x, right? And no, it's no longer uh, that, it's package this. All right? But what's this tell us, this error? Found several packages in there. Okay, cool. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe that's just WebStorm. Found package string util and Winnie Pooh in this. Oh, okay. Well, hell. I come from Alaska. And name two. And done. And I come from Alaska. Sweet. It already brought it in. Right, and now, sweet, 
So every package needs to be in its own folder. The folder could be called anything you want to call it. And, uh, and then it gets the, the thing from whatever you called the package, right? And then it just calls any visible or exported functions or variables. And they're visible or exported based upon whether or not they're capitalized. If they're capitalized, you can access them outside the package. If they're lowercase, you can't directly access them outside the package, though you could stick that into something which is exported and it's available, you know? So that's just like modularizing code and packages and package management. Um, anybody have questions about that? I think that pretty much covers everything about it. Simple question. Uh, yeah. Just trying to import your GitHub screen you still. Every single time it's saved, it just deletes the line. And all I'm leaving you with is some. Did you bring in a desktop monitor? Yeah, you also have a desktop monitor there. Yeah. All right, let me come look at that and see if I can answer that. Any other questions that I might demonstrate up here? Huh? Good. How do you do all that stuff? Uh, you do this to modularize your code and just to organize it, you know, because instead of having 3,000 files in main, you'd have main and then you might have customer a folder customers and then inside customers you might have different folders with code related to different functions related to a customer. You might have another folder admin and in that folder have other folders with code related to different functions related to admin. And so you can start to organize your files just like you do on Windows, you know, like here's personal, here's business. Kind of like when you go to the browser, they have those drop-downs. Maybe. And I don't quite understand that analogy, but maybe that's the same. Sweet. Stop.